Hi guys, welcome to the Iconic Sounds of Sci-Fi, the show where we look at the most recognizable sounds in sci-fi throughout the years and dig into the artists, synths, and techniques that were used to create them. For today's episode, we're going to dive right into one of the most infamous sci-fi films of all time and the man who is widely known as the godfather of sound design. Of course, I'm talking about the legend Ben Burtt and his groundbreaking work on Star Wars. Now, Ben contributed to several films throughout the franchise history, but for today, we're going to look into his work on A New Hope and in particular, the creation of the voice for the lovable droid R2-D2. Born in upstate New York in 1948, Ben grew up in a very academic household and went on to study physics in university. During and after his college days, Ben produced several independent films, one of which landed him a scholarship to study film production at the University of Southern California. Shortly after receiving his master's from USC, Ben landed the job on Lucas Iconic Film. He later went on to create sounds for many more films in the years to come, and to date has received four Academy Awards for his work. Did you know he is also a film editor? I actually didn't know that until I was looking into it for this video. He actually edited all three of the prequel films. I guess y'all can make your own judgment on that achievement. Now, adding sounds to motion picture was not exactly a new thing when A New Hope was produced. Foley or the art of creating and adding sounds to picture in post-production has been around since the origin of talkies and is named for Jack Foley, who was originally hired to create sounds for Universal's production The Jazz Singer back in 1914. During these early sessions, several artists would sit in a large studio together while the film was projected. Each of the artists was equipped with a single effect on a tape reel and a fader, and they would bring in the effects to match the picture in real time. All the effects would be recorded to a master reel in a separate studio. It was quite an undertaking with little room for error. While the Foley work on A New Hope was certainly top notch, it's not what Ben Bird is known for. Rather than just recording simple sounds to match picture, Burt combined many different sound sources to create the iconically unique sounds that we all know and love. I mean, anyone can listen to two seconds of this and know exactly which ship it's coming from. Likewise, anyone can instantly recognize the voice of R2-D2. Burt was challenged with creating something that could convey emotion without words and he achieved this by combining his own modulated voice with the synth tones of the ARP 2600. Designed by Dennis Collin for ARP and released in the mid-1970s, the ARP 2600 was originally intended to be a more novice-friendly synth that could be marketed to universities for use in the classroom. Its departure from the modular style that was popular with Roland and Moog at the time, and its use of normal patches under the hood, set this new semi-modular synth concept apart from its predecessors, and it soon became a hit amongst synth enthusiasts. The synth boasted three robust oscillators with varying features, plus an external audio input, ring modulator, voltage-controlled and self-oscillating resonant filter, VCA, noise generator, and a sample and hold modulator, among other features. Although the three oscillators can produce an epically large sound, Burt didn't really use them to produce the tones for R2-D2. Rather, he just cranked up the resonance on the filter, causing it to self-oscillate. Then by using the sample and hold mod, he was able to tweak the parameters to create a variety of unique tones to suit the scene. By combining these synth-generated tones with modulated samples of his own voice, he was able to create the iconic voice of R2-D2. Now, I don't actually have an ARP 2600 on hand, so I did my best to replicate the patch with the modular setup I have in the studio. I found that the Atlantis has similar parameters with a sample and hold modulator and a self-oscillating resonant filter. That, along with some random voltage from my trusty Wogglebug, I was able to get the bleeps, bloops, and squeals going. Wow. 
Now I just need to record some voice samples, modulate those, and edit it all together. Okay, so maybe it wasn't an exact replication of the original, but I think it could pass for a distant cousin. Maybe. Of course, it's always easy to replicate and much tougher to create something original, recognizable, and iconic. Ben Burt was certainly able to achieve greatness with his work on this character. Thanks so much for watching this first episode of Iconic Sounds of Sci-Fi. I'd like to do more of these, so please leave me a comment if there are any iconic sounds that you would like me to feature. And if you like this video, please consider supporting the channel by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. And I'll see you in the next video. All the best.